Storytelling is always important. As kids, is there anything better than your mom or dad telling you a story? <laughs> and as a country, we all have a story about who we are and what our country means to us. And in our families, we have stories. Stories define who we are. They tell us where we came from. They give us a sense of where we're going because we want to honor that family legacy. And my family's story is interesting in many ways because it captures the promise that is Canada. And yes, there are things and many people who have not had the benefit of that promise. But we have so many stories and lived shared experience and actual history where that promise has been honored and where that promise has been lived by many, many Canadians. And that includes my family. My great grandfather came from Lebanon, a farming village in Lebanon. And they say he came in the 1920s, 1927 was the year that they said he arrived. And he arrived in Alberta at that time and came there because he had family, distant cousins, distant relatives who had come before him because Canada was a place that embraced them. And they came in the late 1800s and he felt that there was this promise and opportunity in Canada. Of course, people really don't know what made them come on that particular year or day or what the promise was really described as. So there are a lot of stories. And it's again, a story about how humanity interacts and how things interconnect in ways that you could never contemplate. So back then, almost a century ago, the story goes that these farmers from my family's ancestral village <laughs> would obviously want to take their vegetables, fruit, whatever it was, and they'd want to sell them to bigger markets. So like in any country, they go from the villages to the city. In Lebanon, the city is the ancient port city of Beirut, an ancient great city. It's not having the best time right now, which is another story that we talk about that. And when they would go there, they would sell their vegetables and fruits or whatever, and they wouldn't have the opportunity. There were no cars to kind of drive back or they would have to take a horse or whatever way, walk. And so they'd spend the night. And when they'd spend the night, again, no TV, there's no Netflix, there's no Crave, there's none of this stuff. They would have to, guess what? Talk to one another over a fire, whatever, and get to enjoy an evening of conversation. And the story goes that these folks, when they went from the village to Beirut, they would hear stories about all over the world and people would exaggerate things and say, oh, did you hear what's happening there? What's happening here? And of course, one of the greatest stories of opportunity and riches was the gold rush it happening in the Yukon and North, in North America here. And people would hear these stories all the way, all the way in Beirut, and it would get to these farmers. So they had this idea of, wow, unlimited opportunity and riches. But what else was in their mind? Had to be true. While the old world could offer us a lot, a great heritage, a great history for so many of us, there are some things it can't offer us, which is a fresh start. Because there's a lot of baggage in the old world. You are in a particular sphere of the society you're defined as rich, poor, establishment, not establishment. It had to have been somewhere in the back of their mind that it's a clean slate when I get to Canada and I can get a chance to just almost reinvent myself. And for all of us, isn't there anything better than a chance to really feel unbounded and put all our passions and productivity to work to their maximum potential? That is the human condition. We have this freedom of spirit and freedom of mind, and that's what we want to do. And we want people to judge us according to who and what we do, not what who we are. So they came here to break away from this baggage of the old world, like many others, and be able to start fresh. And when they got here, they found this place was a place that embraced them. In fact, they tell great stories of how they interacted with our First Nations and Indigenous brothers and sisters when they came to Alberta. 
and they trade to trade with them. They learned their languages. It was something of mutual respect that they looked around and they saw this, these people did these things of value, like in the fur trade, and they wanted to engage with them as equals. And from that little foundation, they started to build their own lives. And then their own lives became something that was genuinely part of the Canadian fabric experience and culminated in the building of the first mosque in Canada in 1938 in Edmonton, Alberta. That early community of my great grandfather didn't build that on their own. They had the help, the love, the support of everyone in Edmonton at that time. And it was after the depression, so there wasn't a lot of extra to go around. But these people saw them as contributing community members and felt these people were genuinely part of the Canadian identity and the Canadian fabric. And they all came together, Christians, Jews, others, to help them build that first little mosque on the prairie and to give them a genuine and a real place and space to become an integral part of Canada and its history. And that story is the one that we need to reinvent, to reimagine, and to ensure that while we rectify past wrongs, we have that same Canadian promise open to every single one of us. And that we say never again will it be denied to any child in Canada so that they can't live out their dream.